Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drinking Beer and Play a Game, and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour Podcast. Rob Thompson is a goddamn moron. He is the worst goddamn manager with any kind of success. He is a fucking fraud. How the hell is Eric, Alec Bohm still hitting cleanup? A guy who can't make it out of the goddamn infield on these little ticky tack hits when no one's goddamn on when it doesn't fucking matter. Go up to goddamn nothing and we're about to goddamn blow the NLC. <coughs> why, why is Kimbrell pitching anywhere but the ninth in a closed situation? Why is Kirkering still being thrown out there? Why do you take out Lorenzen, who's a starter who can chew up innings? We could save the bullpen for game seven, but no, we're down five runs. Let's just keep throwing more arms out there. Idiot. Absolute idiot. When we blow this series and... 50-50 chance we make it tomorrow, but if we blow this goddamn series, he better be fired the next goddamn day. <laughs> oh, and welcome to episode 232, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. As you can tell, we uh, obviously just got done watching, as of a half hour ago, the Phillies lose game six of the NLCS. Not happy right now. I thought I was going to be able to go to bed early tomorrow, but no, I got to stay up for another goddamn eight o'clock game. That'll go until at least 11, 1130. Mm -hmm. So another week of no sleep for Jimmy. And, th and this one is the most important for this series, obviously. So, yeah, there's it's not even like it couldn't have been this one that was 8 o'clock where it's like, whatever. It, even if they lost, we get in our chance. Like, tomorrow's it. That's it. And I, it's like we had home field advantage. That's our biggest asset in this entire series so far. And... I don't. It's like who the fuck showed up to play today? I, I don't know what was going on. Brandon Marsh, and that was it. Everyone else, oh, yeah. shit the bed. Castellanos I, hasn't done anything the entire NLCS basically, except for game one. Trey Turner hasn't had a hit in three games. Bryce Harper had an over. Schwarber was came up small. Like ugh. Yeah. All of them. I mean, uh, fingers crossed it changes tomorrow. Um, by the time you guys watch this, the game will have already taken place. So hopefully, yay, Phils. Yeah, still go Phils. I mean, tomorrow is another day, but <sighs> ah, Chambers. So here's the real question: What do you, what are you drinking the pain away with tonight? Well, Brian, you know, in that Philly tradition, I'm keeping it local. I am drinking from the Nishamini Creek Brewing Company, continuing their pairing with Rita's Water Ice. Mm. I'm having their lemon, Brian. What'd you have before? Was it the... On the show, I've had the mango before, I believe. That was like the first one they came out with. Yeah. And they've also had peach, and they just came out with the lemon. And did you say they don't have a cherry one? Not yet. Not that I've seen. They should. So what So what? What kind is it? What kind of beer? Uh, <clears throat> question. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It is 5% alcohol by volume. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Trademark, blah, blah, blah. 12 fluid ounces, blah, blah. It's just a lemon ale. So does it taste like a shandy or a sour or? It's it's definitely way more on the shandy side. It's definitely so it's a like shandy, very but sweet, but like just has that citrusy. It's very sweet, very citrusy. Weirdly, like weak on the mouthfeel, even by like sh uh, shandy standards, because like if you have say like a Lion and Kugel or a, you know, Sam Adams Summer Shandy or stuff like that, yeah. you still kind of have like a full mouthfeel, even though it's you know lighter and more citrusy. This is just, like, all around, like, you know, it's extremely filtered. There's yeah. no head, no lacing. It's just kind of there. It's, so it's, 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 not, it's not blowing your socks off, Jim? Nah, this is probably the weakest one so far. So far, the tier list would be uh, <clears throat> Peach 1. Peach was delicious. That Like, if you see the Peach readers, go out and get that. Mango was okay. This is a pass. Jim, is it Peaches, like, President of the United States? Is that their best song? Uh, no, it's either that or Lump, Brian. Or the yeah. one where they sing French, like, the entire goddamn time. I forgot the name of that song. Everyone does. It, it, you know it's between Lump and Peaches. It's well, those are the two main songs. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta say, the most surprisingly good concert I've ever seen in my life. Maybe it's because when you go to a concert for a band like that, you have zero expectations. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> I was like, all right, we'll go, we'll see. Like, I think like the guy from the Dead Milkman did like a solo folk set before them as an opener. And yeah. like, oh, this sucks. And so it was like, <laughs> all right, we'll stay for Lump and Peaches and then we'll like book it. Because it was like a $5 ticket. We're talking like 15 some years ago. That's and awesome. then they, they came out and they like rocked it. It was an awesome show. And they played for like two hours. It flew by. Ton of fun. So yeah, if you ever get a chance to see them, go see those guys. They're great. Yeah, no, no, I 
I love the the unexpected. That's why I do believe in catching opening acts too. If you're going to a concert, especially, some people don't. I think that's silly. But. My brother's like that. He's like, yeah, we can you know stay and tailgate through the opening acts. It's like I don't know. I kind of want to try and see something different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Goddamn Napoleons. But um, what? I'm on the side of seeing it. God damn it. <laughs> I uh, I decided to go. It's still kind of in the fall seasonal but it's not it's not um pumpkin this week it's from clown shoes who i still think make the best um cans it's their pecan pie porter it's Ooh. a porter with bourbon vanilla pecan pie flavors and natural flavors eight percent sweet and toasty uh Genghis Pecan rules with an iron fist. He conquers all that he surveys, but he is also a strategic genius. Having won over humble pie eating contest for the better part of the last decade, he's upped his game and is taking his talents to the intergalactic level. We're going next level this time. Around We're going next level this time around to by tweaking the recipe of this robust American porter with an addition of bourbon, vanilla, pecan pie flavor. Right, you had all kinds of trouble reading that one. The, I really hated the way that sentence was structured. You even fucked up the uh, the pronunciation for pecan. You know, Genghis Khan, pecan. No. Can you didn't even you get it? Say, I, I get it. I just refuse to say pecan. It, it's probably say, some... Where are they out of? Is this some Midwest bullshit? Uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, that explains it with their dog shit vernacular. That Fuck makes you, no Boston. sense. It's brewed by Clown Shoes Beer, Boston Mass, and Windsor, Vermont. How is it? Maybe they're, they're close I, together? Like across the border? I don't know. I guess. <laughs> Employee owned beer without pretension. What kind Man, of pretension? They, 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 <laughs> they got a lot going on. But this beer, um, obviously, like any good porter, dark as night really really smooth and yeah i will say like i love me a good porter and it has honestly i taste everything except for the pecan pecan the pecan <laughs> um really delicious clown shoes is another one i never had a beer that i went meh it's okay i'm usually always impressed by them so if you ever can find these, check it out. They're saying this is limited release. Now, I know they do have other... Uh, maybe this is just the one with the bourbon. Because I've seen their the pecan pie porters other times. But, yeah. Check those out. Speaking of checking things out, uh, you've got limited time left to check out a lot of Friends podcast uh, shows, basically. So, uh, our bodies, Kevin and Granite Thought Cops, just announced in their last episode that they're going to be ending their show soon. Uh, our buddies at Rose Mortem, they're cutting it out at episode 300. They're going to do a different kind of history-related show, but they, I don't even know if they really know what they're going to be doing yet. But, uh, yeah, they're going to be ending then. Rich Dickman, they've said for ages they're ending at episode 300. So, a lot of good boys out there ending their shows. So, make sure you head on over to all their pages. We'll throw some links below. Check them out, give them some listens, put them out on a high note. Speaking of friends of the show, the Krusty Corner returns this week, uh, responding to our good friends at Not For Human Consumption. So, link will be below for anyone. One dollar and up tiers on Patreon. It's a doozy. I won't spoil anything here. Jim gets offended. <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> Jim remembers getting offended. Um, yeah, well, Jim, raise up a glass. All those podcasts are awesome. They've been on our show. We've been on their show multiple times gonna miss them hope to see them all again bring them back on in some fashion but cheers boys uh we're gonna miss we're gonna miss listening to you guys yep pouring it out for the good brothers except i'm not pouring it because my computer's here. <laughs> no you pour it on there show some goddamn respect you put it on <laughs> yours i already did you just can't say it no nah, yeah <laughs> all right chamber so i feel like this is gonna be a reoccurring bet I can tell by the state you've at least moved one of the boxes of shelves, and having seen it myself, I know you, you still got a lot going on. The rest of the house looks good. Your game room is still needs some tender love and care, but have you been able to play anything this past Not week? Not a goddamn <laughs> second of anything. I threw two birthday parties two days in a row for my daughter, so it was an entire week of just cleaning and last-minute fixes and 
decorating and hanging shit and putting up decor for the house to make it presentable, doing the goddamn yard work. Oh, just just not nonstop. Like I sh- I actually when Brian was over, I showed him the room and like the current state of it, like you said. And I showed him I have one of my shelves that are gonna be holding games. I started it last Tuesday. The last time I touched it was last Tuesday. <laughs> I didn't have a single second to even build one shelf to finish it off. It's half done. I'm just laying here, mocking me. <laughs> is that is that shelf going to be your new Tetris 99? Is your room the physical representation of te- Tetris 99? <laughs> oh, my God. It just might be. <laughs> you can just Trying to cram all it. this shit into a decent size, but, you know, still somewhat confined space. I mean, listen, Jim. You need to think, you need to think positively. Well, Brian, you know me. I'm Johnny Positive over here. Everything's going as well as it could this year. What could go wrong? Everything's turning up Millhouse. <laughs> Jim, are you are you Ralph or are you Millhouse? That's the real question. <laughs> uh, see, at least Ralph has ignorant bliss. You used to Where... have that. I feel like you used to have that pretty well down pat. Yeah. He used to be a bit more of a Ralph. Now I'm, now I'm probably more of a Millhouse at this point. <laughs> Oh, Jamers. Well, Where twist and turns can take a big old dumper on you, and I'm just, you know, I'm self aware enough now to be like, ah, well, well yeah, there we go, I'm doing this again. Jim, I got to mention, I know we always talk about how you and I grew up loving Simpsons, and I'm uh, going through, I don't know if you have Disney Plus too, but they have this really convenient thing this time of year where they have their, ho- their Halloween collection. And since they have all the Simpsons episodes, they have all the Treehouse of Horrors like listed out, so you can just click them. And that's a yearly thing for me. Like I end up rewatching most of them. But uh, I was doing that this year, and it's a late. It's Treehouse of Horror, like I think ten or eleven. So I don't even know what season. That must be season because they start in two. So that's season twelve or something. Yeah. Um, it was really good. It was the spoof on I know what you did last summer where. Flanders is a wolf man, but like Homer or Marge ran him over by accident and they get away with it. And Homer's like, that was so easy. You know, I never liked that little nerd Millhouse and starts driving towards him. Like <laughs> there's some humor that was still just so sharp in that show at, at certain moments. I was like, oh, I really miss watching old school Simpsons. I think the last Treehouse of Horror I really remember watching was the one with like the dolphins and they like came to life oh, and came on the land and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I know the exact episode is Night of the Dolphin. That was probably like don't... season thirteen or fourteen or something. Yeah, no, there, it, it's funny because like, and I watched that one. I was like, ah, oh, that was kind of that was kind of weak. Yeah, no, there's definitely weak ones. I'm impressed. They're they're still going with the Jambers. I mean, they're up to thirty episodes. I mean, I, S- dude, they are, are they are wheeling them all in on life support at this point, like. Julie Kavner sounds like hell as Marge. Just, just let the poor woman stop. Well, I mean, we talked we talked about our good buddies ending things. Like, at what point do the Simpsons just call it, you know? When Fox stops giving them money to stay around. I guess they still bring in enough ratings somehow. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, Jambers, I know you haven't had time to game, but you and I spoke at the party this weekend. Uh, I did finish Mortal Kombat 1, and... Um, you know, I still say Mortal Kombat for a fighting game has no right giving that much thought to a story, and I do like it. Uh, it didn't grab me as much as some of the other ones. I still think 9 and 10 are the best of the new series. Um, it's not bad. It just takes it in a what I would call a... Once you get over the twist, it's old hat. What you think ends and how it ends is how it ends. I'll just say that. There are little surprises. I mentioned to Jim. I won't mention here because I don't want to give any type of spoiler. But there were nice little twists thrown in, like, the last couple fights you do. Um, Outside of that, I am so close. I think I'm now. I've confirmed. I decided to look ahead. I'm, like, four missions away from finishing Starfield, the main... um, the main story i still have plenty of like side shit that i'm, that I'm just gonna put off to the side until i finish the main quest uh i hit the really big twist in that game once again really cool i like it <clears throat> i think just because i don't have the time i would like to the things i've enjoyed the most about the game are also the things that are stopping me from being able to keep playing it because it's going to take me for goddamn ever so 
the main story is pretty awesome. Though. I'll just say that. And uh, yeah, I, I I dove back in a tiny bit to Dead by Daylight just because it's a Halloween event and like I can earn some good like blood points during it. Um, I haven't played that game in months, and oh my god, does it show? Like they update all the perks and killer things that like while i'm gone so now like things i thought were good are now shit and there's these other perks i'm like why is this thing so good so yeah there's a lot of relearning with that game um but that's kind of been my go-to i told jim now that once i get done starfield uh, all my focus is, is goddamn legend of zelda so i can give it to him and famous of, last words get rid of that goddamn game because it, it needs to come off my docket and then I think I'll, I'll. I think I might have one or two puppet combo games to go, but I have to really dig down deep if I'm gonna get to 23. There's gonna be some gym level games if I'm gonna do it. Let's put it that way. They're not. It's not gonna be God of War and all the other things I really hope for. It's oh, uh, there, there's, there, there's no, there's no shame in it. Yeah, but just, just embrace it, Brian. I'm gonna have to embrace that. We're, you know, you gotta get ready for call, for Call of Duty, Jambers. That's the real thing. <laughs> You, you you have till is it the second week of November? I forget when it comes out. I know it's in November. So get your shit together, Jim. <laughs> well, now now the majority of the house shit's done and that the parties are done. I might actually have some free time. So <laughs> don't jinx yourself, Jim. No, oh, I know. I'm gonna. That's a fame. <laughs> speaking of famous last words, ugh. <laughs> something will come up. It always does. But Jambers, uh, real question. What questions do we have from our awesome patrons this week? Over at patreon.com slash drink a beer and play a game, where for as little as $2 a month, you can ask a question that we will answer on each and every single one of these Power Hour podcasts. First up from Burn Retinas, which cryptid, oh, I just put it down, which cryptid or urban legend sounds the most realistic? And so much for the news bombshell about aliens weeks back. Hmm. I have lots of thoughts on this, but I want to hear yours first. Oh, George Bush doing 9-11. Cryptid, Jim. Not goddamn conspiracies. God <laughs> damn it. Uh, no, I actually... Ah, that's tough. I gotta really think about that one. Um, I need to look up some examples quick and be like, which one did I, I like, mean, think of before and go like, oh, that one. Well, here's the deal. So, you can go with the more obvious, like... Throughout history, um, things like the giant squid is considered a cryptid until people realize there really is a giant squid. Is it the proportions of the kraken like you hear in old tales? Probably not. But I've seen those cartoons. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. But something like the duck-billed platypus was considered a cryptid until someone's like, no, that's actually a thing. And if you look at it, it does look like very odd. Um, oh, yeah, that thing is like nature's joke. So, you know, the, the more popular ones are things like the Jersey Devil, uh, Megalodon, Bigfoot, all those, Nessie, the Lake Ness Monster. Um, I think there's just good explanations of, like, people who reported them, who saw a version of an animal, um, like the Chupacabra. But I think something like a Bigfoot, like, it was probably some form of an ape someone saw walking. Not the that whatever that footage is from wherever where it's that awful. Oh, pose. that famous one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think that probably could there be some kind of call it missing link of the evolution between apes and men? Maybe. I, I mean, Neanderthals existed forever side by side with us until eventually we phased them out. So. Would yeah. we consider like Area Fifty One housing aliens and their tech is like an urban legend, or? Well, that's an urban legend, but it's not. Cryptid is the actual creature. So, like, but he's I'm... saying cryptids or urban legends. So. Oh, I thought he just said cryptid. No, he said cryptids or urban legends. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because like, yeah, I mean, like, it's like when I was a kid, I one hundred percent believed if I ate watermelon seeds, I'd have one growing in me. I'm like, get it out, get it out, get it out. God damn it, Jim. You probably still avoid them, just to be extra cautious. Maybe. Um, no, I think a lot of the creatures it, that are considered whatever, I think they are real versions, but they're not the exact creature that people think they are. 
going with that conspiracy theory. I mean, we never even really talked about that crazy alien shit. What's funny to me is all the conspiracy nerds used to be that there's aliens and government are keeping it from us. It's where it's at the best possible time that the government, if that, if any of those leaks are really true, no one trusts them anymore. And it's like, now the conspiracy is, huh, look, they're trying to show it to us. It's like done such a 180. It's like, they're literally showing you the thing that you thought was the conspiracy. If it's true. Oh yeah. So. I mean, that hearing was just a distraction for them to fucking part in goddamn Sam Bankman freed. So that's all that goddamn was. Jim, put on your goddamn tinfoil hat when you talk like this. That's a fact, Brian. <laughs> the globalists came in. What'd they do to the frogs? <laughs> oh, we know what they did to him, Brian. But no, I, I, you know what? I do put, uh, I do put plenty of stock in, people like seeing shit they don't know what it is um and same with urban legends like that shit comes from something it's usually not just completely made up you know so yeah i put i put, I mean, I put stock in it yeah i do too like obviously like Loch Ness monster like they you think by now what one it would be ten thousand years old and two it's like you know it's not i mean my favorite one's probably be bermuda triangle when really it could just be explained as, well, yeah, we're talking the nineteen like thirties through fifties and yeah. plane technology wasn't great and you could hit bad weather in a hurricane and you'd die. So, you know. I mean, Jim, so, there's probably plenty of shit you still don't do sur- superstitiously. Like, are you gonna willy nilly walk underneath a ladder? Never do. Not once. I, I yell at my kid to get the hell out of the w- way of the ladder. Are you going to break a mirror? <laughs> well, right, that's why I don't look at them. Or black cats, like all those things. You're like, your scientific brain says, like, come on. But then there's that part of you that there is a hesitation, or you just still avoid it like the plague. Brian, to emphasize this point, to bring this episode full circle already. So uh, when we took my kid to Chuck E. Cheese for you know the actual birthday, and I was wearing my Cliff Lee jersey. I think this jersey's cursed, but it's like my also like. A good jersey, like it fits well, looks good on me, all that shit. So I had it on, and Aaron Nola shits to bed, and I immediately just rip it off. And then we get a run back, and I'm like, "There we go! I'm gonna save the game by taking this off." Like I'm, I'm superstitious as hell, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Well, I said sports fans are the funniest. I, of course, I feel like Philly sports fans are the most superstitious. Hence, Silver Lions playbook. The idea of like dudes thinking. They really do need to wear the same shit, not shave, do like all these little traditions. Like if I oh, just, hockey hockey guys with the playoff beards. Yeah, so it's kind of just like, I I do love that stuff. Any any sane person will tell you, yeah, no, none of that matters. But I love it and I support it a hundred percent. So have fun with your superstitions. If, if you get enjoyment out of them or or you think it's keeping you safe, go nuts. <laughs> And, and don't do Bloody Mary. Just, just don't do it. What about Candyman? Never did Candyman. Same as Bloody Never Mary. Never will either. Jim, next Patreon exclusive. We're going to make Jim do all the superstitions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's going to kill me. <laughs> Think of the views. <laughs> <laughs> Even YouTube's going to be like, you know, normally when someone gets murdered in a weird fashion, we don't let it allowed on YouTube, but yeah, it's Jim. <laughs> next uh, up from todd howard sucks would you rather be able to be invisible for an hour a day uh parentheses broken up how you wanted or know the events of the future for the next 15 minutes parentheses but you can't break it up invisible for an hour a day you can't break up the 15 minutes but i guess every day you can just pick a point and say no the next 15 minutes well, you know the future for the next 15 minutes. But that's what I mean. Just once a day, right? Yes. See, I would almost say the going invisible. I th- I don't know if we talked about this on the show or if it's something I've, I've done so many goddamn hypotheticals with people. The invisible thing, I'm sorry. You know you're just going to do bad shit. You're going to get yep. in trouble. It's not going to be used for anything of good. Yep. The, the future thing, I think, would be more practical. And also, it's like, oh, the lottery's gonna get called in 15 minutes. Let me. See yeah, it's like numbers. how far into the future can I look? Like, you know, what in the future can I see? All yeah. that kind of shit. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I feel like just caveats. For- There's caveats, Brian. Whereas invisibility, I can 
do whatever I want, probably. I guess, though, isn't it that question, though, of, like, the 15 minutes into the future? Would you then be consumed with, like, trying to make sure, like... I don't want to die today, so let me see. Like, let me avoid doing. You might almost start overthinking it, versus like, you would have at first probably win some lotteries, like get some money, like do shit like that. But then it's like, would that be all consuming? Would all day be thinking about when do I want to use it? When do I want to use it? You mm -hmm. know. It's true. Whereas the invisibility is probably just pure bad fun. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Let's come on. <laughs> For anyone on the audio feeds, I am vigorously smiling and nodding right now. <laughs> I, I, ooh, that is, oh, fuck. I mean, I almost have to say invisibility just because, right, the hijinks. The hijinks you can get into, Brian. Can't say no to the hijinks. I love the hijinks, but I, you know what? I'll go with the, the I'll do it, I'll do the future and do the opposite because I, I want to. You know what? I'm going to do that while you're invisible, and I'm going to catch you before and still fuck you up while you're invisible. <laughs> no! <laughs> As Jim's coming to, like, come, like, hit me in the balls or something, I set up, like, a powder cloud, so I see him, and then I just hit him. <laughs> He's like, God damn it! <laughs> mm -hmm. That's probably how it's going to go down, too. <laughs> Jim. Then once the invisibility goes away, I'm still covered in flour. Like, Farva, like, goddamn Farva <laughs> before me. <laughs> I like that question a lot. God damn visibility that would be whew, all the trouble you can do all the hijinks all the revenge it would just be so good ah oh, you could do so much revenge with that so much revenge <laughs> there's a lot of plotting there too though because you got to make sure you get that revenge done in that hour yeah that's true yeah mm. but ooh, I, the revenge i love it i do love it Great then question. There, then it comes to questions for other hijinks, like, say, stealing. Like, now, if I have a coat, the coat's going to be invisible. But if I take something off a rack and put it <coughs> in my coat, now, does that become invisible? Or does that stay visible? Nah, it stays visible. Then there's just a floating video game walking out of a store. Yeah, I was going to say, the stealing would be pretty damn hard, as other than you just see shit floating. So your hijinks would be more in the revenge, I imagine. Like... But even then, if you're if you had a weapon or something, it's like a floating thing is going with you. Yep, caveats, Brian. Lots of caveats. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. But the potential, then the potential. <laughs> Jim just keeps getting caught as the invisibility wears off. Like, why is he always beaten off? <laughs> why is he always at the bus stop beating off? Why does he not time this? Why is he at the bus stop? How is he so bad with time? <laughs> or I, had, I said I think I'm being smart so I set my cell phone alarm to go off five minutes before the invisibility would end but I don't mute it god damn it <laughs> god damn it I did it again yeah oh, I love that question give us more of those hypotheticals I love the hypotheticals oh yeah we love us some hypotheticals but yes that wraps up the questions for this week so once again thank you to everyone out there for the support for the show um now that, well, fucking God knows the playoff schedule, but now that at least, like, house life is settling down, we should be recording the next bonus episode soon. I know we keep talking about it, but life gets in the way. So, we're going to get that done. We have to talk tiptoes, Brian. It has to be done. We we do have to talk tiptoes, unfortunately. But, no, we definitely appreciate you guys. Thank you for the support and for the bonus episodes and, and questions. Keep them rolling in. We, we love it, guys. Yep, sure do. All right, Chambers. So uh, I like that we're getting more and more of these. And I know we're not super consistent, but this episode, we're going to have a couple good old beer items. And this, and this, the first one's like brand new. It's Off the brand presses. goddamn new. So um, there'll be a video playing, but there will also be links to the item itself. It's the Guinness Nitro Surge. Um, and what it essentially is, is a specialty cap with a specific nozzle for pouring beer. And it's it works in conjunction with these Guinness drafts that are meant to utilize this. Now, I've done some digging into this. And as the video will show you, uh, you literally, you put it on top. Um, and I've, I, I've dug really far into this. So what the guy... I was going to say, I knew this was something you were going to nerd out on. Yeah. So, right. Explain to the good people out there who don't know. What is exactly like a nitro beer? 
So nitro is any beer that has the nitrogen in it. And um, if you've ever opened up a Guinness, you usually hear a little ball and it sounds a little different when you open it. Like, I don't know how to describe it other than a more foamy sound of gas. This regulates, this surge actually regulates because the cans come with the exact amount of nitrogen you need. However, you're only supposed to let so much of it escape at a given time. That's why when you pour a Guinness in, if you're not pouring it the right way or slow enough, um, you're not going to get that typical kind of, I call it the sandstorm effect of the slow pour. So this thing, you got to hold at 45 degrees. And if you watch it in the video, it actually... It, it lets it go in spurts so it doesn't let all the gas go at once so you get that perfect guinness pour which is what you really want to get at guinness it's one of the beers that has a very specific way you're supposed to drink it so it's almost like a wine stopper too in yeah that sense. exactly like an aerator for uh wine that's a great way to think of it but it's just meant for guinness and um you buy the device and you can use it as many times as you want. So the device itself does nothing more than through the nozzle, it regulates it. And there's a little power button that helps um, just figure out like the little pump device. That, that I love you have to charge the fucking thing. I know that's, I hate that part of it, but um, I decided, let me see if I could find it. So I found it on Amazon and other places. You for. Amazon is like 91 bucks directly from Guinness. I forget. 90 what? Wait, what? $91. But this is from Guinness. So I don't know if from Guinness itself it's cheaper. It's in pounds. It's, it's, not, a, it's not available in the United States yet. It's <clears throat> only available in a couple spots in the UK. But here's the caveat. Uh, you can buy it in the United States. They don't make the cans for the United States. So if you look at all the reviews for this device in the United States, there's this like pin trick where you basically have to poke a little hole and then it'll work. So it's like, of course, Americans, we figure out a way to like kind of rig it. So these specialty cans, I guess it's just part of the way you regulate it. My guess is the pin trick from what I've read, probably you're robbing yourself of the whole purpose of the gas being regulated. Um, but then people are just getting a fancy way to pour their beer. So I really hope they definitely bring it to the United States. Um, like I said, I, I love me some Guinness. And yeah, it's really, really cool idea. What I would like is, I was going to say, it would be interesting to try this on other beers. But since it is special, specially designed for Guinness cans, I guess you can't do that. Um, but I'm but all it's not for specially it. designed for Guinness cans, Brian. It's specially designed for specially designed Guinness cans. Well, exactly. You know, you got to get that special DLC with the DLC, Jim. So, so Brian, you, I'm glad you brought it up. It was you being the huge Guinness fan between the two. Like, I like Guinness, but yeah. you love Guinness. Do you, do you ever see yourself using this more than, like, one afternoon? Well, here's the deal. Yes... If I could have these kit now, here's the deal. If those cans also come with a crazy premium, if they're much more expensive than the typical four or six pack of Guinness, then I'm not going to do it. But if this was like, I also don't love the idea of $91. I will not pay that. I will wait till it is cheaper or it comes in a pack or I ask for it for Christmas. They or are high. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I've said many times, Guinness is the ultimate drinkable. If I had to drink beer like every day, I would choose that over other ones. Like, I do love it. Um, but honestly, I probably only buy Guinness three or four times a year at this point. If I had something like this, I'm not saying I would go out of my way. But I would, every Guinness I had from that point forward would probably be with that device. So, um, yeah, I like it. <clears throat> I look now, at Brian, quick yeah. question, quick aside. Yeah. So I'm going to assume it's like I'm assuming that it's a probably yes. And it like aerates the beer more with the specialty pour and shit like that. The Guinness. But is this really just marketing bullshit where we're just pouring it to get that cascading effect in the glass and to be like, ooh? well, no, I mean, you will get a creamier, uh, better flowing. But like, have you ever had a legit? Have you ever had a tapped Guinness that's poured correctly? Uh, no. Okay. There is a, it, the same way how, you know, like when you and I first started this and we're like, do you, does the glass really matter for a beer? Does temperature matter for a beer? Like Guinness poured correctly, you can tell the difference. And that's why there's like a gazillion pages and this and that, that like covered a shit. Like it is one of these beers and may, probably because of the use of 
nitrogen and everything and the, the way the gases escape um it will be a much creamier more like a milkshake feeling and flavor if you pour it correctly so to the layman are you gonna really notice a difference probably not but if you're someone who really likes guinness like someone like you this would be worthless for like Correct. you don't i mean i know you you like guinness but you're not like oh my god i need a guinness so right. yeah someone like me that's why i said that i'm not going to go out of my way this would be something like if the wife was like "Ooh, like i saw this in the beer store and thought you might like it i would really appreciate it but outside of that you know me I, I do love goofy beer things so i do appreciate this love me my guinness still i think the best and you know what you know what else i like the craftsmanship of the thing like, it just looks cool like it looks fancy that's all i'll say it does now now Brian, correct me if i'm wrong here is this not just a huge misstep just not finding a way to make it work with the standard goddamn can i thought about that like what shouldn't you just redesign the can but we're redesigned the nitrous opener thingy. Yeah. I mean, I think this is their way of trying to have the in between of like, instead of having a whole like beer set up, like, you know, how I have my tap and all that shit, like my little, basically beer meister and shit. Right. Instead of doing that, this is like that in between of like, this is the closest thing you can get to a real Guinness pour <clears throat> without trying to create some funky ass can that may or may not sit on shelves well. So. <clears throat> think about it. Guinness is probably one of the only beers you get that little fucking ball in, in there. Yeah. Like, so they, they're already unique in that sense. So why not, why not take it full tilt? You know, I do like it though. And so we'll see, we'll see if it ever comes fully to the U S along with the cans. <clears throat> My guess is they're going to do like a trial run and see how it sells out in UK and Europe and Ireland. So we'll see. Oh, I can't even whack it with me, Shillelagh. Uh, he don't fit on me, Blanger. Damn it, Jim. Stop being racist. <laughs> right. The <laughs> Irish aren't real. Don't you dare. We saved the Western civilization. You, you didn't bastard. save Dick. <laughs> oh, no. We're out of potatoes. Guess we're not eating. Fucking stupid whole goddamn island. Hey, hey. Where you're living today is because of us. Thank God we didn't have the potatoes. Oh, yeah. The original slums. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Brian. Hey, we fixed it. Otherwise, we'd be... You didn't fix uh, shit. The Italians if it, fixed if, it. If it wasn't for us, we would just still be eating beans on toast from those goddamn English. It doesn't sound that bad. Don't you dare. With it doesn't your, sound that bad. With your, like ve with, your, with your Vegemite. I like me some beans. No, Vegemite's Australian, Brian. The Marmite's the UK one. That's all the same. Culture yourself. Jim. ZX. Now, let's go from an interesting thing to... <laughs> Oh, this video. They know what they're doing. <laughs> so I will be playing the video right here. But in This is, is one I fully encourage anyone to listen to the audio portion to check out the video portion for or at least collect the link so you can see what we're talking about here. Yeah. He's a lovely girl, Brian. It's you know, I almost I, bringing back the old what was it, beer thoughts or something? I don't know, we did it like twice. Yeah, yeah. Um I thought, you know what's surprising is I thought there would be so many more videos of that. Because at first there, were, there was a flood of them. Maybe I just haven't looked hard enough. But, um, yeah. Do you need it, to find more when you have perfection now, Brian? <laughs> well, this device is called the Beer Marionette. And it's um, from um, Bavaria. And you can order it, Jim. It's like 180 bucks, And it can really? be shipped here. Yeah. I, that, I, that doesn't seem that bad. No, so it's it, but it's a whole contraption. Like so, if you're watching the video, I know you're probably focused on one thing, like or two things, like Jim and I are. But she's wearing this giant backpack, so that's part of the device. And basically, like a marionette doll, you have the two handles that you're trying to balance the cup of beer, and you're trying to drink it. If you just type in beer marionette on TikTok or YouTube. There's like this ongoing like challenge. I think the fastest time was eight seconds that a girl did this or something. Really? So yeah, Jim. For some reason, girls in this challenge are very popular on TikTok. Can you imagine why? I, I don't know, Brian. I don't know. <clears throat> they seem like lovely girls. I, I I what 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 amazes me though is if you type in beer marionette, the very first search above the actual product is beer marionette girl, and they're all trying <laughs> to find out who she is. So yeah, yeah. They, they did. Not, you know what? Kudos to their marketing team. They did not f around when it came to the girl that they were showing off. No, of course not. They're, it's it's called being smart. Um, 
Here's my question, Jim. How do you think you'd do it with this? <laughs> oh, God. Absolutely <laughs> awful. But I want to try it so goddamn bad. Like, I feel like if you get the cup to your mouth, you'd almost have to bite it and, like, hold it there while you tip the rest of it in there. Brian, I can barely hold a glass to my mouth without spilling on myself, <laughs> as is. So if you're going to be throwing extra work into it and extra pieces and parts, you're asking for a disaster. Or I would back-ass my way into sheer perfection out of nowhere. It will be like the one skill I randomly had. <laughs> Jim, question. If I decide to build this or buy this, can you wear that same outfit she is and then we do this video? <laughs> you know, I knew this question was coming. I was debating making the joke myself beforehand and saying I'll do it and wear the same outfit or figured that you would take care I of it. I saved you some dignity. You're welcome. <laughs> I can't say what isn't there. Uh, I, I really want us to do this. I, and, and I am, by the way, um, this sparked me in remembering we still, I need to buy the... Uh, what the hell was that thing? The thing that was on fire? The caramelizer? Oh, yeah. I, I am buying that. So, because now that <clears throat> you're even closer, hopefully you stop getting COVID. We're going <laughs> to. We've had it the same amount of times. I'm just saying, you're the COVID kid. And Wait, what? <laughs> and we are going to try as many of these things as we can find. I, I really want us to do this. And like I said, I will gladly build something like this. So, that would be a fun project. It would, it, we'll use our old lathe, Jim. Oh, yeah. We can, the one we built, Brian. We can dig that one out. <laughs> uh, but I do love this video, and it's only because of the ingenuity and not for anything else, Jim. Nothing else at all. Brian, if this video has taught me anything, is that love finds a way, Brian. <clears throat> sure does. Sure does. Do you think she spilled it on purpose? Brian, do you think they made the straps in the backpack big enough for fat girls? Because I'm going to say they might not. If I was a betting man, Brian. I'm just saying. You said it. Love finds a way. <laughs> God so, bless the Bavarians. You comment below if you want to see Jim in that outfit. <laughs> but Jim, let's keep this uh, this weird beer cast, I'll call it, moving along. With the cream cast? Is that your transition? Yeah, which... I don't know what bothers me more. <clears throat> the fact that, <laughs> yes, that, let me hear this. that there's a cream cast um, that it we're finding out about this from a website called the Dreamcast Junkyard. Like, that there's a whole site dedicated to the Dreamcast still, and it's still operated. And that... I, I, I was going to say, are shocked by that? I don't know. I guess I kind of am, but... It, I, I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't be. That's one of those things. Um, I love the play on. I love it. You know. You know. I like play on words, Jim. You know. Oh, yeah. I like that. Um, it's a cream ale that was that's made by. Uh, I just had it here. Uh, Odd by Nature Brewery. Yeah, and they apparently out of Maine. <clears throat> yeah, they apparently have made beers for like Contra, Super Mario Brothers, Grand Theft Auto Five. Uh, so. You know, they they dive into this, and we've we've covered a lot of uh, video game theme beers before. Um, Seems like we should do it more, given the name of our site. But how much are we going to say without drinking? Hey Jim, like, oh, I, cool, cool. I did three or four volumes of articles. <clears throat> What's amazing is there was a drought, and now I've seen more and more popping up. So yeah, I think I got to get another volume out there now that I'm seeing more of these pop up. But. The problem is, just like this beer, it's already gone. It's not available anymore. So, you know, if you wanted it, kind of too bad. We've talked about this before. The goddamn FOMO that comes with specialty beers is way too real. And all I ever do is end up finding beers. I'm like, God damn it! I wish I could have tried that. So yep. I want that shit to stop. But other than that, I like the name. The label looks awesome. And yeah, cream owls are pretty goddamn good. Yeah, I don't, I've never had, you know, here's the thing with cream ales. I've never had a bad one, but I've also never had one that, like, completely blew me away either. Can I also say one thing that uh, kind of pisses me off? Go on. In the article, the guy describes this as a 4.3% units, yet on the can picture he has, it says 5.3%. Well, Brian, Get your shit together. 
in fairness, this is a UK based page. So what do you expect, Brian? I'm just saying, <clears throat> so, you know, just saying, just saying, Jim, I don't know, the, the, but this would be one I would definitely try that. You know what? My, my sick, uh, enjoyment of these weird video game beers. This should be something I could see overspending for, like if somebody actually still had to can on eBay or something. But yeah, I would also be that. very weird about ordering beer that has to get shipped and then it really fucks it all up. Oh yeah, because you know there's no way someone on eBay is going to ship it, right? No, of course not. But Brian, you mentioned the FOMO hitting you, so let's talk about the kings of FOMO real quick. Mm -hmm. our, our good dear friends at Analog Bry, they just announced another device. Hopping onto the N64 this time. So, I mean, I don't really have a ton to say. 4K resolution, uh, it's an N64. FPGA emulator once again. It's it's, 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 it's a fancy Even though emulator. they always say FPGA, not emulation, when it's like FPGA is emulation. It Stop is. fucking saying that. But that aside, it's going to be the same bullshit we always see from Analog. It's going to be very limited. It's going to be, you know, fucking... Bought out instantly by the resellers. It's going to be very expensive as is, probably. I'm yeah. going to assume probably at least 300 bucks for this fucking thing. Uh, and it's something that I really want and that I'll never have. Both yeah. for because of the price <clears throat> and because I really don't need it. And because, I mean... You, you it, left it there. You don't, you don't need it is the only thing you need to say. Fuck the price. You know the price is going to be outrageous. I'm sorry. If you're worried about getting 4K N64 gaming, then do the emulating on your computer. It is emulation. You click on the goddamn link from Analog. The future is here. 64 bits of pleasure. And then right away, notify me when it's available. Because if you read any of the comments, it's already been sold out. And they have in big bold letters, no emulation. If you read all the comments of all the nerds fighting with each other... Everyone's like, yeah, it is. It's like exactly what you just said, Jim. And they're like, well, it's actually this. And someone's like, yeah, but that actually is emulation. So it is emulation. And I, I hate everything about this because of the company, because of the <laughs> bullshit. When you have to announce this, like what should be a cool announcement that gets people excited. And then right underneath. Oh, by the way, the duo is shipping at the end of 2023. Pocket adapters are on target to ship by the end of the year. Like, all these updates for your shit that hasn't even been shipped out correctly and people are waiting for. This is going to be another one. I hope there's not that many idiots who are going to go out and buy this thing. Because no, it's you know you're, it's you're, well, No, no, I'm saying you're going to be disappointed. You're going to wait until, like, 2025. Like, you know you're getting fucked over. This is not a good company. Figure it out, guys. Come on. It's limited run all over again. And yeah, like it's gonna be the same thing. I oh god, I you know what? Like if you keep giving Analog your money, I hope, I fucking hope, just out of spite, that they start pulling what they did with the pocket, and especially with the N sixty four. You know it's prime for it. Different yeah. color variations about a year after when people are still waiting for their original pre orders. And they're gonna be like, oops, super rare color variants available now and ready to ship in a week, and everyone starts to scream again, and then they all buy the same one next time. Jim, it got me so mad when you actually seemed like you were excited on one of the tweets when you saw that announced. I was like, God damn it. This is something you would waste your money on. No, my exact wording is, I hate this goddamn company, but they know how to make something I want. But I'm not going to waste my money on it. I hope not, Jim. I don't right, want I, I have a retro tank and S-video cables. I'm fine. Jim, having the means of playing a system you have has never stopped you from buying stupid shit. Also true. So don't give me that. I can't wait till episode 320 and you're like, yeah, so I was at this uh, thing and I know I overpaid for it, but look, now I have this. <laughs> oh, no, I'm saving that for something even dumber, like a 3DO. I'd rather have a weird console than like just a prettier version of something I already have. I mean, if, if, if analog's going this way, then you know like the future is just going to be just name X console. They're going to do a version of it. They're going to sell it. And it's going to, I don't know. Yeah, like, I think the Turbo Duo one is, like, the only one that really needed a device like this for people who want to use their original media and shit like that. Yeah. Because it was a very low-run system, like, original TurboGrafx 16s with CD add-ons. And you need arcade cards to put in there to play certain games. It's a real pain in the dick with that. 
So like that Turbo Duo one, that's the one that would probably be the most useful out of any of them. Yeah. But even then, it's just like, yeah, but. Do you have any faith that this thing actually comes out in 2024? Um, no. <laughs> I would I would say like Christmas time at the very best, but I'm like they didn't even start pre-orders yet for it, so I have no. I'm I'm uh, if they said put fifty bucks down, I'd say it wouldn't come out in 2024. I agree with that. So and they're great about not updating you ever on the status of anything, so except for when also no one, that. Yeah, to your point. Everyone who ordered this will be like, well, now here's a, like a throwback to N64, and here's like those goofy color versions of this. Yet I know everyone ordered it, like, and you still didn't get it, but here's a specialty version. So there's going to be something mm-hmm. like that. So, Right, we all know you're not going to get one until they do their Donkey Kong 64 version. Don't you dare. Bring back that jungle green, baby. I'll burn this whole world down. All right, Jambers, so last week... Uh, we talked about the departure of um, the fuck was his name, or was it two weeks ago? I'm already good transition, Brian. I know uh, the guy from Unity. The fuck was his name? Oh yeah, Johnny Coxsock. That that was not his name, but this week uh, Billy Dicklick. Pete Hines is retiring from Bethesda now. Jim, rest in peace. If you were like me, did you say? Who is Pete Hines? (laughs) That was my first question, Brian. (laughs) I had no fucking clue. Look, I know Todd Howard. We all know Todd Howard. No, we don't know anyone else. Anyone saying is just pretending. Shut up. If I knew that without, like, I only know Todd Howard because of our awesome buddy Todd Howard sucks, and I love Bethesda games. I, I, you know, I couldn't tell you most developers' names or whatever. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, he helped see the successful launch of most of the Fallouts and a lot of great Bethesda games. Um, good luck. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Enjoy your retirement. Like, he was at Bethesda for 24 years, so he was there for, like, the bulk of us being into Bethesda, of them becoming a juggernaut in the industry, of being bought out by Microsoft. Like, it doesn't really say why he left. Like, is it because of being run by Microsoft, or is it, you know... He probably made a good amount of money. It's been 24 years, and he said, I'm good. So Bethesda wished him well on their socials. Seems very amicable. So good for him. Yeah. Um, this is one of those ones. Uh, adios. Have fun. Do you think it affects any quality of Bethesda, Jim? Um, <clears throat> I mean, he was the head of publishing. So, so he, now. <laughs> probably not. Like, I mean, yeah, he probably helped get games out on time. So, but besides that, I don't know what else the head of publishing does. Well, Jim, minor transition I have, and something I copied you in <clears throat> from your good buddy Elon Musk. Uh, he said, at the risk of saying something controversial, Fallout New Vegas was a great game. He's a fucking retard. <laughs> But you, I've heard you say that same thing. No, it no, Brian. It isn't was. It is a great game, and it's still a great game. I mean, no one plays it anymore. Jim. Let's be honest. And he's tr- actually they, it has a huge like mining community. People still play it all the goddamn time. Shut up. No, it doesn't. Yep. F- fuck yeah. Look up goddamn. I'm gonna go to Steam right now. Look up concurrent players. Just because people play it and mod it. Your statement was literally people don't play it anymore. Yeah, let's see. They don't compared to other games. They don't. Come on, let's see how long this takes, Jim. And if it takes it's more than five seconds, way too long. If it, I never use goddamn if, Steam. If it takes more than five problem. seconds, I win. One, two, no, no, three, no, bullshit. Four, no, five. no bullshit I won. metric. All Hit right. my dick. No, so there wrong. you go. No, <laughs> incorrect. Just because I'm not a goddamn nerd who plays on a computer, Brian. You're the one that's scared to take your goddamn Switch to the shitter, even though you live half your life I there. don't want shitticles on it, Brian. That's not how it works. Have you never watched Mythbusters, you goddamn plebe? Those? Don't act like you didn't have a crush on the redhead. Everyone had a crush on the redhead. I still have a crush on her. Well, stop being a bitch. <laughs> and that Asian dude. You could probably get it, God too. Let's be honest here. damn it. You would say that. Taste the rainbow, Brian. Jim, Taste you are rainbow. never going to look this up. 
The point is... <laughs> I'm going to find it by the end of the episode. Ha! Ten! That's how many people are still doing it. No, it's going to be a low number, and I'm just not going to bring it up again, Brian. Jim, I'm just pointing out the fact that your boy, he's calling it out. He likes it, too. You and him are on the same wavelength. Uh, Wait, okay. Hey, hey, guess what? Let's see here. Fallout New Vegas. 2,565 players live on Steam. Uh, 24-hour peak of 4,000 or some some shit like that. So, there you go. That doesn't even fill up a fraction of a stadium. Fucking rookie, good. fucking rookie numbers. It's good. A AEW would kill for those numbers, Brian. Yeah, right, 3,500 were playing nine minutes ago. All right? How about that? Huh? that this is just the past week. That means nothing. 13-year-old game, Brian. Bringing in numbers. Jim, you here's, here's my, here's my question to you. How many people play Call of Duty? I win. Now, shut up. <laughs> which one brian which call of duty exactly it doesn't matter what, what's the 13 year old call of duty brian call of duty black ops one let's see i don't know but the sad part is that probably is 13 years old at this point i i know aren't we old as dick isn't it painful that, that, that hurts me to hear that <sighs> here we go let's see here uh oh uh current players 407 for black ops brian eat it yeah because they moved on how many how many games are in bethesda or in fallout that people still play don't count the first three. Well, count Probably the third all of them. one. Probably all of them, Brian. And how many Call of Duties are there? A million. Shitload. Yeah. So by fact, by fraction and right. analysis. The cream that, rises to the crop, Brian. If I can <laughs> if I can quote the Macho Man, Brian. The cream rises to the crop. But you know, right? but do you, did you actually see the reason that the spike in the fall in the fallout numbers was because of Elon Musk? So there you go. Boom. Your boy, he raised the numbers. Was well, not because of him. <laughs> Yo. X going to give it to you, Jim. <laughs> don't, you, don't, you, don't you fucking do that to see, me. See what I did? Don't you do Oh, no, oh Ryan, Ryan, actually, Ryan. noticeable decline over the past three months, slightly. So, Musk didn't help shit, so suck a cock. What are you talking about? I said from today, Jim. You can't do from today. Hey, pe bullshit. peaks and valleys. Just because it was on the decline doesn't mean it's now on the rise. Well, goddamn thing's a sine wave anyway. <laughs> don't act like you know sine or cosine. Don't... I don't you goddamn dare. <laughs> I know of them. Don't you say it like you have any goddamn authority. Goddamn. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll throw a fucking tangent your way, all right? Don't you try me. Don't. Don't. I'll, don't, I'll bring you into limits. Don't make me. I'll fucking... I'll do some goddamn divisibles and whatever the divisibles? hell Divisibles? <laughs> God damn it, Jim. <sighs> See? I remember things. I'm thinking I didn't learn a goddamn... So if if anyone is semi local to the Philadelphia area, then you might have heard of Preston and Steve, and they have a running topic of um, Florida man, and yet this is another. Great I mean, they're not the only person in the world who talk about Florida man, and I like me some Preston and Steve. So Jim, to take away from why me. do you hate on everything? Why do you hate on fun? Because I why hate are you anti myself, Brian. That's why. Maybe, and I take it out on everything. Maybe if you supported Philly things, the Phillies would not be in the position they are, Jim. That's why Philly is so negative. Maybe if they fucking won something, I'd support them more. <laughs> How about that? Huh? Maybe if they had a good fan base. Ooh, Preston C. Just support Preston C. They're better than any other DJs out there. Accept it. Support it. It's Philly. Yeah, I mean, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, goddammit, Jim. Uh, <clears throat> a GameStop clerk in Florida has been charged with manslaughter. After he shot a shoplifter. Now, uh, the guy's name is Derek Guerrero. He's 33 years old. Doesn't and... know Eddie. God damn it. Uh, he, he had to make sure he stopped the man that grabbed five boxes of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Ultra premium trading cards, which basically go for 120 a box. The guy grabbed him, was running out it. And uh, Derek pulled out a gun and shot him in the torso. Get, get, get. I, I did not see. Well, no, he killed him. Yeah, um, yes, he did kill him. He His accomplice, he went into the car that was waiting for him, and he died on the way to the hospital, I think. Yeah. So, Jim, um, I don't think it's a secret. You and I are supporters of Second Amendment. Yep. I'm a supporter of defending yourself. But... Uh, I can't support this, Jim. And I know you might try to, but I'm not going to. <laughs> you know what, Jim? I won't let you. I ain't taking a stand, sir. 
I mean, okay, there's so many layers of like I, I thought about this like No, Brian, look, let's make it very simple, okay? If yeah, you, it is simple. It's it's very simple. Yeah. If it was Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I would understand because that's a real Don't card game. Dare. Pokemon though. Don't you dare. You know, I just call that taking out the trash, right? Right. Episode I mean, here, over. Here's my question, Jim. Was that memo from that guy? Did he really get his employees charged this much to protect the GameStop product? God damn, you want to talk about leadership and rallying the troops. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, Fucking always could use that again. Still better. Still better. Is this a sign that the leadership is really helping push change? Is, that's all I'm saying, Jim. It's just a, it's an honest question. Not a penny to be spared, Brian. I and mean, like, this guy this guy just fucking ruined his life for GameStop. Th that's the part that like, can you imagine? He's 33. It's not a young kid. It's someone a little bit younger than us that goes, "Hey, this guy is going to steal from this company that I work for." I know the thing to do. So do you think this is just a very big, like, do you think he was just having the worst day and this is his falling down moment? Or do you think this is like this delusional, like he had to save the shop from getting shut? Like, what do you think goes through his mind? That, that had, that, that it had to be fucking hero digging going on in there. Like he, like he just instantly, like, it was almost like a snap. And he was like, oh, here's the moment. Here's my chance. I've been waiting for it. Like he he he's been fantasizing about being the guy to stop a crime with his little with his gun, and uh, yeah, he did it for GameStop over Pokemon cards. Not the most horrible thing, Brian. Got to be honest here. Well, when I saw the <coughs> excuse me the headline, brave, brave statement. I know. <laughs> but when I saw the headline, my mind went, "Oh, a shoplifter like probably came in pointing a gun at him. He shot him like that. I'll justify all day." If a shoplifter's pointing a gun at a shop owner, any shop. Yeah, self-defense. Yeah, sure, fine. Different. But yeah. this guy was running away, and you go, not today. And that's what you are going to go to jail. I mean, you shoot I don't, him like a bitch. Well, it's interesting that he only got manslaughter. You know, I, I like, think uh, <sighs> I, we were talking about it in the Discord a little bit. Luckily, we have all these lawyers in our Discord. And they basically talked about it in the sense that uh, they went for manslaughter because straight up murder would have been tough to prove because you have to be premeditated for that. Yeah. So that's yeah, well, why they yeah, went with manslaughter. Yeah. So manslaughter is the correct one, but I'm saying like, I like compared to murder, like I think the sentencing isn't as crazy as you would think. No, it's not as severe. So, so I'm kind of like, God damn, that's D dude's going to get 10 years for killing a guy for fucking Pokemon cards. You know, but here's the deal, Jim. You will get the naysayers that say, well, that guy shouldn't have shoplifted. Like, there will be someone who throws that argument and seriously means it, right? Like, there will be someone's like, that 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 meme that now has been overused, I enjoyed at first, which is fuck around and find out. Right. Oh, yeah, that's completely overused at this point. I hate it. But, yeah. Um, and, yeah, this is really not, like... Like, it's probably some dumb kid going, I want some Pokemon cards. Ooh, I'm going to steal them. Let's fucking go. Or we sell them. Like, yeah, it's like, you know, stealing shitty. Yeah, sure, fine. But, you know, it's not something to die over. Yeah, I don't know. That's... Not to say that I didn't have fantasies running through my head when I realized my 3DS was stolen. I get it. But also, it's where you work. It's not, you know, something personal with you. So... <laughs> you, you couldn't do that. Just like you can't do other things. <laughs> full circle full circle make sure you circle. watch the uh, crusty corner to get that reference um but yeah i mean uh, it's again it's how you say it god damn it. it it's very 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 interesting but once again is this just a common thing that would happen in florida you tell me i mean if it was going to happen anywhere it would be fucking florida and it is funny where like i i think there were like maybe a couple comments here and there about like oh you know uh, it's shocking that in Florida they're charging it. It's like, man, like even places like fucking Texas, like with some of the loosest gun laws in the world, like you still can't shoot a guy running away. You still can't do that crap. No. I mean, <clears throat> I think PA is one of the states to stand your ground or not. No, not stand your Castle ground. Castle Doctrine. Yeah, Castle Doctrine. Um, and it gets messy. But like, I think you'd be safer if they're on your property and like, yeah, then you get into that argument if they're running away, all all that stuff, you know. Yeah. Let, let's make it very simple for anyone out there. Uh, if you work for a big chain store, 
Uh, just let the people take whatever. <laughs> it's not worth putting yourself in danger over, or yeah. losing your life over, or ruining your life over. Like, if someone's gonna steal something, just, who fucking cares? Yeah, no, I, I, I do agree with you, Jim. Even though you're wrong most of the time, that was a good sentence. <laughs> I was trying to think of a way to fuck it up. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. <clears throat> so yeah, just uh. GameStop. I just do find it ironic that that guy just put out that big memo for the company, and then this happens. Oh God, he he saw that memo and he went, "Sir, yes, sir." Not the press you want, right, Jim? Not the uh, press you want. <laughs> oh man, well, well, welcome to your new job. Ah, uh, PR this one away. Well, I mean that's easy to PR away. Acting on his own. What can I say? You know, big company like us, you can have some bad eggs. What can you do? God Couple get cracked in the carton, Brian. That's what happens. Chambers. Make a little donation to the family. And, you know, just, there you go. Swept under the rug, Brian. Never to be heard from again. <laughs> uh, Sprinkle a little crack on him. All right, Chambers. Now let's talk away from real world horrors to virtual horrors. And since this is the last episode before Halloween, since we will record before next Halloween, however, it won't come out till after. I need to I need to slip something in here, something horror related, and something that um actually sparked me. I was watching a good old Monster Madness from Cinemassacre, and in one of the episodes, uh, uh, Jim and Mike were talking about like, is it horror like movies? And you can have that debate. Got me thinking about like video games, and the same way I would apply it to movies, I would say in video games there is a debatable like, would you consider it horror? Because there are plenty of games that definitely have horror moments or scary moments. But, um, you know, I was thinking, like, today when you think of horror, probably the number one thing you think of is survival horror, I assume. Right. right? It's probably the biggest genre. <clears throat> Limited resources. You're, for the most part, going to be underpowered to deal with everything. And you got to try your best to not just take things head on, but avoid them. But then it got me thinking, like, well, just like movies... Do super gory games deserve the title of horror? Like, something I think of, like, Doom. You know, you are in hell fighting demons. There's grotesque gore every inch. Like, but it is in no way are you running from it. You're engaging these enemies and these monsters. Like, by all stretch of imagination, it should be horror. But would you consider that a horror? I would say... It has horror elements. I don't know if I could ever go full horror with Doom. Like, even though, like, you know, you can get a jump scare from the, uh, like, those yeah. camouflaged, uh, whatever the fuck they're called. The, oh, uh, the, I, I know what you're talking um, I keep thinking pain the pinkies. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the pinkies, yeah. Yep. So, like, you know, that can give you a good scare and shit like that. But for all the imagery and everything, I still don't consider it horror. Now, like, Quake 2? Like, especially that, like, opening level on, like, that prison ship. I would call that game hard. Because that level is just... That is... I've talked about it before. That level is fucked up. Like, you've got... Like, you're walking through and you just hear, like, people being, like, you know, chained up to the walls. Like, with their, like, limbs torn off going, help me, kill me, stuff like that. And, like, these pained voices. Like, mm -hmm. that freaked me the goddamn hell out. Where Doom, it's just like... Yeah, the only freaky thing is, you know, turn the corner. Oh, shit, I'm dead. Well, think about, like, see, Doom 3, I would definitely say. Doom 3, what, I would say, is hard, yeah. yes. It revolutionized with the use of flashlight, lighting, and, and actual scares. Like, you know. But but that's a good example of a game I was thinking of. I'm like, okay, so then what do we really think is horror games? Like, is Resident Evil 4 even still a horror game? Because it's so action. You know, Resident Evil 5, for that matter. Oh, we Resident know Evil Res 5 isn't horror at all. And that's my point. It's like you look at the Resident Evil franchise, it really is the I'm not saying it's the starter of it, but it's like the thing that really made it boom. No one's gonna say one, two, and three aren't horror, but like even by three, you're like, oh, is it more action at this point? Get a you little know, more over the top by that. I would actually yeah. say might be a little controversial. Go I would say Resident Evil six is more horror than Resident Evil five. Mm-hmm. I would say, especially that first chapter with Leon's chapter. Yes, like, that's exactly what I'm thinking Back to zombies. Of. Yeah. 100%. The Chris ones, of course. Although the Chris the Chris has that one cool level where it's the invisible snake that, like, 
he, it's killing off your guys one by one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that moment's freaky, but outside of that, it's very action-oriented. Um, <clears throat> then you got, like, the jump scare games, which is, like, the Five Nights at Freddy's, the Amnesia's, the... Even Alien Isolation, where it's one-on-one, -on -one, but, like, it's, like... The psychological oh, yeah, survival yeah, like horror. horror 100 that's i know fucking... that that's what i'm saying like those are definitely we consider those horror um but then i think of something like luigi's mansion it's about ghosts and your and the character in the game is scared to death and these ghosts are coming at you but it's more made for kids it's so adorable. It's, it's an adorable horror you know like so then this brings me to... Even... And then there's the weird in-betweens, too, like Eternal Darkness, where, like, the yes. gimmick is that it messes with you. Because it's not really a scary game, even though it can throw a lot of, like, effed up stuff at you. Like, like psychological both... horror. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So then I thought of a game right away where I'm like, ooh, like, Bioshock. Like, when you see come across some of the scenes with, like, the Big Daddy and, like, the shit that's going on... And the way, like, especially when you're first approaching Big Daddy, you're, like, kind of, like, ooh, that's, like, it's scary in a sense. And some of the shit that's going on is really creepy. Oh, yeah. But I would say I would say the first half of Bioshock, I would definitely call horror. Uh, yeah. The second half, no. Like, it's, you know, you're too used to everything at that point. And really, like, it's not even what you're doing or going against, but it's how they set everything up early on. Where, like, early on in Bioshock, like, you'll see... Uh, you know, a little sister, just like the creepy little girl, like running away in a corner really fast and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Know, what the hell is that? Or you see like mm -hmm. the silhouette of like, you know, one of the, uh, uh they're not uh, Reapers. Those, um, not Rippers. What are they called? Ah, uh, I can't oh remember. <clears throat> I know what you're saying. Um, the, the, the common enemies in Bioshock 1. Uh, like you'll see them like in the corner, like saying some like really goofy, spooky crap, and you just see their silhouette. Like the set pieces were set up pretty damn well and freaky early on in that game. No, and that, so that's why, so I agree. Like, that's where I thought of Bioshock. I was like, you know, I definitely got horror vibes from it, but, like, would you categorize? And it's commonly listed in, like, the top horror games of all time. So I, I'd say it people, belongs. Even though, like, only some of it belongs, I'd say it belongs. So then, like, that got me thinking deeper. I'm like, okay, so if if by definition you think of a horror game as something like you're underpowered you're kind of like hesitant to deal with enemies and whatever would most from software games be horror you are extremely underpowered you are like you don't always try to openly engage enemies and in most of the game like bloodborne is one where it's clearly i think that's definitely hard that, that i would say that's the closest to horror yeah yeah the the other ones you could say fantasy but you're still facing these like grotesque especially the dark souls like yeah it's medieval but like you're fighting rotting corpses and these crazy looking monsters like could that be hard too yeah maybe and like i haven't like, played a ton of uh from soft games yeah but like you know did you do dark souls 3 no nah, i never played that or or no i, I mean um, i'm sorry elden ring elden ring yeah i was about to bring yeah. it up like, you know, I put 20, 25 hours in Elden Ring, whatever it was, and, like, at no point did I ever think, yeah, this is hard. Like, they had no, some of real, course not. They had some really yeah. effed up, you know, creature designs and some really cool stuff going on, and a lot of the themes and all that, but at no point... You know what it is with me with horror? And I could be wrong about this, because you're more the horror guy than I am. Horror definitely seems to be more of, like, a vibe than the things you put in it. Like, it's a thing yeah. where it's like, you can yeah. throw all the horror... And again, like, I guess Luigi's Mansion is a good example. You can throw all the horror tropes and themes in the world into a game, but it can still not be hard. Where you can make a horror game out of something that would have nothing of the traditional tropes of anything. Yeah. I mean, think of... Um, I, I said the horror moments in games. Any of the booze mansions or shits in Super Mario Brothers. It's, it's spooky. The music's on point for being spooky. Legend of Zelda. Think of like uh, the temples where the hands are coming out at you. Yeah. Uh, oh, when, that's when, creepy as shit. Yeah. When you get to like the uh, the well level, the dungeon in uh, Ocarina, when you get around to that, like that's pretty. That's a lot of harm. That's probably the most that's, horror related yeah. really part of the game. Majora's like, Mask actually has a couple really like fucked up set pieces in there. Yeah. Well, and, and that's that's kind of my point. Like games can have those moments. 
But then think of like Castlevania. That is literally a game about nothing but horror tropes. But do you really consider that? Of course, everyone's going to say it's a horror game, but you're not like scared. You know what? I consider that I would I actually do consider that horror just in the way that I would consider, you know, slasher movies horror, even though you're not scared watching them. Certain ones. Certain ones, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah there are scary slashers, obviously, but... Yeah. You know, but there's, no, a lot the of, there's a lot of goofy ones, there. like... Jason X isn't a horror movie, but... I mean, I mean, it's not a it's not a scary movie, but it's a horror movie. No. Yeah, exactly. And that's why, like, I, you know, I kind of look at this, and, and it, it always brings it up. So when I saw James and Mike talking about that, I, I looked up. I'm like, yeah, what do people consider horror games? And it seems like nowadays the dominant thing is to be considered horror in most cases like first person is a kind of surefire way to be horror like like think of uh once again i said amnesia outlast even the newer resident evils they have way more of a horror feel to them oh yeah um you know the last of us that's a third person game but like i think it's something like uh, dead rising that is literally the undead have taken over the entire mall you're not scared. Yes, you are under power, but it is just goofy, funny, like B movie. But is that still a horror game? It should, by all means, it should. I would be. say Dead Rising is. Yeah, yeah, I, I would mean, say Dead Rising is. So I guess that's my question. I know you don't play. Obviously, I know you don't play as many horror games as I do. But like, when was the last time you played a game and you legit had a like that feeling of suspense or like? Oh shit! Like your heart's beating a little faster. Like you're not going through the motions. Like ah, oh, these are just enemies. Like you're legit. Like ooh, okay. I uh, actually, when I was maybe playing Limbo a little bit, when like I first okay. was encountering that giant spider and crap like that, mm -hmm. and the times it would randomly pop up, and obviously that's early in the game and all that. But yeah, I was like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Yeah. Which just like when you first see it, you'd give that like whoa kind of feeling. Yeah, that's a per. See, that's a game where. Did you beat that yet? No, I didn't get a chance to go back to it yet. All right. Yeah, I don't want to spoil it. I feel like, <clears throat> given the subject matter and, like, what you think about, it's like a little boy is lost in the woods. Yeah, I don't care things. what it is. Kid torture is hard. That's hard. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say, did you ever play Little Nightmares? Mm -mm. That's a game 100 million percent, I say, is hard. Like, I put that in horror all day long. But it's like, I do think back to the NES, and that's why, like, Castlevania, even uh, uh, Symphony of the Night, the game that, like, will sometimes always be listed as one of the top, if not the top horror game. I'm like, it's yeah, not but, scary, like, but it's not scary at all. Like, you're not, you're semi-underpowered, but not really. Um, you know, I, I always think about that. Like, if you were going to make a list of the top but horror like, games. But, like, even, like, Splatterhouse 2010. Or really any of them. Perfect. But yeah, Splatterhouse, yeah. None of them are scary, but they're definitely horror. But they're gore-tastic, right? Yeah. You know, like, <clears throat> that goes to, like, Hostile and Saul. Are those just torture porn movies that are, like, yes. tough to watch? But it is a horror movie. Oh, it doubt, is horror. horror. Yeah. But it's, like, more like you just can't look at it. And then I've gotten in this argument, then you have to put Seven as a horror movie. Right? Oh, I would put that like, as a horror. Yeah. Some people are like, well, that's just a thriller. And I'm like, well, it's pretty horrific what he's fucking doing. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, and so, so with games, I know it's a lot weirder because after I do notice when I do streams and I play puppet combo games, I definitely am so much more intense. Like, I legit, I can feel like I'm more intense in those games, which is maybe why I enjoy playing them so much versus. It doesn't matter what else. Even though I'm playing Warzone, I'm down to the last guy. I don't have that same kind of thrill as, like, those puppet combo games. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm trying to escape this killer. You know, like, so that's why I'm like, can you put a non-traditional horror game, like a From Software game, in that category? Because it gives you that same feeling. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure people out there can make a way stronger argument for a lot of From Soft games than I can. I mean, they started kind of in horror, like that uh, first-person shooter that they had on the PS1. Uh, and fucking oh, uh, Tower of something, Dungeon, something or other. Like, I forget. It was I kind of more. In, it was kind of more in, like, the Doom kind of realm of first-person shooters, but I would say that was a horror game. 
and then you think of ones that are just so fun. Do they overlook like Left for Dead? Definitely not. But even though it's not you, scary at all, yeah. No, it's not. But however, your asshole puckers a little bit when you come up to that witch. Oh yeah. And that music changes, and then you have an asshole friend who hits her, and you're like, God, Every damn time. <laughs> Every goddamn time. And then he goes, Dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. I hit her. Yeah, it's like that. Uh, it's like back in like the early '90s when they were having congressional, or I think it was like a fucking Supreme Court hearing about like decency and porn and something like that. And they were talking. It's like you know, how do you define porn? And some guy, one of the senators or something, was like, "I don't know how to define it, but I know it when I see it." And that's kind of how yes. I feel about horror. Yeah. So like, if we know Left for Dead, that's def- definitively a horror game. Then do you put Zombies Hate My Neighbors as a horror game? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, once again, that's another one. You're not scared. Yes, civilians are dying and like whatever. But like, it's just the horror tropes, right? Yeah. But that's another one where it's like it has every horror trope in the world. But I still consider that horror where, again, Luigi's Mansion has every horror trope in the world and I don't. See, yeah. See, I see. I am extremely lenient and I just I say, fuck it. It's a horror game. It's a horror game. You know, like... Yeah, even though it's a Q1. I guess, yeah, I guess I should call it a horror game when I think about it. I feel like you've said it before, and I've had heard others. Like, it seems like there's a lot of people that do kind of rank Majora's Mask almost as a horror game. It's got its parts. It's got some really screwed up shit in there. Yeah, yeah. So... (coughs) Excuse me. Um... I don't know. Like I said, it did get me thinking. So what do you think is more important to define a horror game? Is it, like you said, is it the vibe, the feeling you get? Or it clearly can't just be the imagery. Because, like, Splatterhouse is a good example where I would list as a horror game, but you don't get any feelings of dread or fear. Right. I would just say atmosphere. So it's just the atmosphere. What's more important, the imagery or the music? Or or I should say sound design of a game. Um, oh man, because sound design can really amplify like anything, yeah. Especially like that like- Resident Evil, when you first go in a mansion, that set the very first game when you walk in, that like mm-hmm. that sets you. But then again, that first image of that zombie eating the body, you're like, oh, <laughs> like, but the sound design gets you for sure, too, and not even including jump scares like the Cerberus. The sounds can definitely get you. Oh yeah, or the director's cut basement, the best soundtrack of all time. I don't even get me started with that shit. I wow, hate wow, that. Wow, used... wow, 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 wow. I hate that Perfect. so much. Right, you want to be unsettled? You're unsettled. Jim, what I really think we need to do is get you. I need to see your reactions because I think I did one time have you stream. Five Nights at Freddy's or something, or have you attempt to play it? I, I did sit there to play it. I don't know if we ever uploaded the... I think we tried to do a little Let's Play when you were doing them out of it, and I don't think I it ever think made the I think we did. I, I want... Uh, there are certain games I want to see you just actually try and play, because I, like, I feel like you are easily jump-scared. Oh, I am. Completely. <laughs> just lots of... Ah! Oh, yeah. Ah! <laughs> 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 yeah. I don't know. It's just food for thought in time for Halloween. So, you know, everyone out there, what is your thoughts? What what are what constitutes a horror game? Is it that typical survival horror? You're underpowered, not able to fight the thing you're being chased. Or is it the atmosphere? Is it the sound design? Is it the tropes that are being used? You know, like I'm I'm very curious to hear what your guys take as on that as well, because, yeah, it's part of the fun discussion, I think. Exactly. Like, Bri, when you're watching his videos, what's scarier? Is it, like, the subject matter that they're talking about? Or Mike Pate coming at you with his 10-incher? You tell me. Jim? I hate I hate you. Because I had to have you explain to me where that came from. And I hate everything about that. <laughs> you're welcome. So, Jambers, here's a, here's a question. Is lemon your new fla- favorite flavor from the Rita's line? Well, Brian, considering when we took our little mid-episode break and I went back to the beer fridge, I grabbed one of the peaches. So that should probably Ooh. tell you right there. And that bad? Or just that bland? It's just that bland. 
it's not it's not bad, but there's just like nothing to it really. And it's a shame because like I really like lemon water ice, so I was hoping for way more out of this, but yeah, it was it was kind of a downer. Maybe if you had a soft pretzel with it. Hmm, that might help. Never know. But then again, it's just like then I would want cherry at that point. <laughs> God damn it, Jim. But yeah, but like the peaches, the peach is fucking delicious. So the peach is a tart peach ale. Uh, it's definitely in the sour family. Again, it's five percent, like all the Rita's Water Rices from the Chamonix Creek. But this gives you like actual like flavor, pulls off what it's supposed to be. This one's really goddamn good. I like this one a lot. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I can't suggest this enough. Uh, he can't. It's funny because somebody did mention ask ways that I could potentially be pronouncing pecan. And they put out a whole bunch. I want to see what you think about this, Jim. Because some of them, I, it doesn't make sense to me. Alright. Uh, here's the pronunciations they said. They asked if how I would do it. Is it pecan P-U-H-K-A-W-N pecan 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 or pecan Right, this is all sounding vaguely racist to Asians, Brian. Yeah. Pecan. Pecan. Well, I am a proud sayer of pecan. No, I'm a pecan. And... I'm a pecan boy. I had to bust your balls because, like, obviously. Oh, you know, I, I know. Needed to get because of the, but... the gang is con. Yeah. Um... No, I'm a, I'm a pecan sayer. Maybe it's a Philly thing. I don't know. I guess I guess it probably is a Philly thing. But <clears throat> super, super delicious. Goes down smooth. At 8%, this is one of these uber dangerous ones where... You do not feel it at all. There's no booziness. It doesn't even give you that warmth of, you know, like sometimes there's alcohols that like when they're high in alcohol, you get that like kind of warm face and everything. Mm -hmm. No, it just, it is hits you. It's delicious. Perfect uh, dessert beer, I would say. I, I went through two of these big boys and I probably wouldn't suggest going above two because they are bigger cans, mm -hmm. but still very delicious. Clown shoes, you never really disappoint. So, with that, folks, we want to say we hope you guys have an awesome Halloween. Thank you all for watching. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscription button and the notification bell if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, subscribe, give us a five star rating. And even if you want to bash us or tell us how Jim would look good in that uniform, we will read each and every one of your comments on these Power Hour podcasts. With that, have a good night, everyone, and cheers. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>